So today we are going to discuss targeting the EGFR mutation in non-small cell lung cancer, whether the EGFR exon 19 and 21 mutation have a different role in the era of today's era. So the personalized therapy with the EGFR TKI is, has long developed in the last 20 years with the start of Jeftinib around 20 years back. Now we have almost six drugs in this for this particular subset of patients. So basically what is EGFR? EGFR uh, is a wild type receptor and most of the disease which causes are because of the mutation in this receptor. So we have three different generation of drugs available to us. First generation drugs are Arlotin, Efetinib, second generation Afatinib, Decomatinib and third generation Osimertinib. So we started with the first generation TKI, it showed a good response rates and a PFS of around 11 months both the drugs. Then second generation TK has a slightly better response on survival of around up to 15 months. And third generation TKI had further improved it PFS to around 19 months and overall survival to almost uh, 38 months. And on all these patients, survival was better in Asian patients compared to the Western patients. And overall survival as well as PFS was significantly improved. So all these three trials which showed the second generation and third generation TKI showed that survival was improved, depth of response and everything was better as we started using newer generation of the drugs. So this is the Archer 1050 study which showed that decomatinib, the second generation TKI is better than jefetinib which improved progression of free survival and eventually better overall survival as well. One of the first study to show an overall survival benefit in EGFR mutated lung cancer. Similarly, the Lux Lung 7, which compared the second generation of Fatinib versus Jefetinib, though showed a, just a 0.1 month, but which was a significant benefit in progression free survival. And at 24 months, almost 10% patients were alive than just the first line TKI. Similarly, the third generation Osimertinib in the Flora trial showed a significant around 9 month benefit of adding Osimertinib compared to just Jefetinib or other Arlotinib. Now other trials which are recently also published like the NEJ009 trial in the TMH study in which they compared jefetinib with chemotherapy compared to just TKI alone. And both these trials have shown a very good result. Like in the NAG trial they showed that median PFS was almost 20 months compared to jefetinib similar to flora trial. And in the TMH study though it was somewhat less but still it was very significant 16 versus 8 months. So in the first line, we clearly all these trials showed that there was a significant trial benefit with all the drugs. The overall survival was not significant with the first line and other second line TKIs because mainly because of crossover between the patients. So Lux Lung 7 also showed that after median uh, follow up of around three and a half years, P OS was not that much significantly different 28 or 25 months because almost 50% of the patient in second line eventually took a, a fatinib. That's why it was not significant. Similarly, you can see in the flora and the archer study. Flora, though final OS has shown significance with around seven month difference. Archer similarly has shown seven month difference with this clearly significant overall survival benefit. So regarding the combination therapy, we have now survival benefit like for the Jeftinib chemo studies, NAG and TMH study. Similarly, the Erlotinib bevacizumab, Erlotinib ramosirimab has also shown survival benefit and the bevacizumab, Erlotinib bevacizumab study is going on which might tell us more information about this combination therapy. So regarding already told the first line therapy treatment, survival benefit was mostly with the Archer study and Flora study only and none of the other trials showed a survival benefit of using TKI. So now we see why the in the EGFR mutation now we have two common type of mutation EGFR 19, exon 19 and exon 21 mutation. We see different mutations now have different results compared to DEL19 mutation, exon 21 mutation have a poorer outcome. One of the common causes of this poor outcome is patient with exon 21 mutation have multiple co-mutations. As you can see in this study, almost 70% of patients had some other mutations as well. That's why progression-free survival was worse in this subgroup of patients, 19 months versus 7 months. And also we can see that tumor mutation burden was also high in this patient. It showed there's some other mutation and some other mechanism is also going on. That's why they, these doesn't re respond to the TKI that much well compared to DEL19 mutation. This is a sensitivity study 
we showed that del 19 deletion has greater sensitivity compared to any other TKI if we see head to head. So what's the basic difference between these two kind of mutations, del 19 and exon 21? The most common usually is del 19, around 50%, 40% will have 21 and 10% will have some uncommon mutations. So del 19 mutation is more common in younger age, and more certain common in left lung, papillary type and lymph node metastasis is common. And for exon 21, usually in older age, more common the right side, lepidic growth is more common and lymph node meds are a little bit rare in these patients. And outcome is poorer if we compare to del 19 because these patients have higher chance of pleural effusion, higher chance of other mutation, other mutational burden and that doesn't respond that much well to TKIs. In vitro sensitivity has similarly shown that decometinib has good response to one of the most superior response to again, this exon 21 mutation compared to other TKIs. And if you see now at the Archer study, if we compare this particular exon 21, the decomotinib has shown a very good difference of around 7 months benefit in the particular this subgroup. If you see at the flora of the osimertinib use in particular subgroup, there was not that much significant difference according to the mutation type of mutation. It definitely showed a good, if you see the forest plot, there was a difference in exon 19 mutation, but not in the LH5 et R exon 21 mutation. Similarly, in the combination therapy versus TKI monotherapy, there was not any significant difference in the overall survival, though there was some PFS benefit with using a combination therapy, but overall survival difference was not there in this particular subgroup as well. This is both for the NAG trial, if you see the PFS and OS, the, there was a not, PFS benefit was there, but OS the benefit was not there. So out of all these, these are the TKIs which are approved. You can see there is a very good response rates in exon 19 mutation, but one of the best response rates in exon 21 has been shown with either decomatinib or osimertinib which are newer generation of drugs. So, in, but also in Asian population, if you see in the flora trial, there was not that much difference. But in decomatinib, there was a clear-cut overall survival benefit in uh, Asian population, though flora had a very low number of Asian people in it. And we uh, see the Asians across all the studies. So one of the best response rates in Asians was with decomatinib and secondly with osimertinib. Other drugs didn't have that much significant response compared to Western population. Similarly, we see a case like this, like a 60-year-old woman who presented with cuff and a CT scan showed a 3-centimeter mass, biopsy was done, it was lung adenocarcinoma. Brain MRI showed some brain meds as well and mutation study was done, it was exon 21 mutation. So patient was started on decomatinib and you see the remarkable response that after two months almost the disease has resolved and patient had mild grade 3 diarrhea which was managed and patient continued on decomatinib. And even patient with, uh, though the patient of CNS disease was not included, but still they have a very good CNS response because very less patients actually developed CNS disease in this Archer 1050 study. And one of the least uh, common second uh, progressing sites for brain in this particular study. Similarly, one case report which was pre uh, recently published in which they have used decomatin in the patient who has progressed all or all the TKIs and even chemotherapy and the patient was given a trial of decomatinib and patient had multiple brain disease which has progressed post radiotherapy as well. So after starting this drug, there was a remarkable response and the patient almost responded for one and a half years with the use of this drug. Similarly, the other case report similarly showed the similar things. So definitely this has a very good response in CNS as well. And regarding the use of decomatinib, though adverse events are common, at the 45 milligram dose, so eventually the dose is reduced, the adverse events were also decreased. And we can see the one of the most common side effects is diarrhea, skin rash, stomatitis. So we see the lower sub uh, dose group as well, even if they reduce the dose, there was not that much difference. The patient was started at full dose and eventually the dose was reduced. And this is one of the study which is going on, if they are titrating the dose, we will know further. So if you see the grade 3 events, the least almost there was significant toxicity in all the regimens, combination therapy and single TK relatively has less toxicities. There are no cardiac toxicities associated with decomotinib, but they are reported with osimertinib. So now it's recommended that for exon 21 mutation, uh, we should prefer decomotinib. Thank you.